week 29. I combined week 28 and week 29 into one video because nothing really happened in week 28. Kind of like some of my other weeks, week 28 really just didn't have anything. Nothing new, nothing strange, nothing worrisome. So I'm just combining week 28 and week 29 into the same video. At 29 weeks, the baby is as big as an acorn squash. Baby's growing white fat deposits under his or her skin and the energy is surging because of it. Baby already measures about 15.2 to 16.7 inches long. Right now, baby weighs about 2.5 to 3.8 pounds. My body at 29 weeks, lots of kicks from all the crowding going on inside. Headaches and or lightheadedness, itchy belly, back, leg, or pelvic pain, hemorrhoids, constipation, trouble sleeping, gotta pee, and varicose veins. My symptoms have been kind of the same and kind of different. So I was, you know, peeing when I sneeze, my boobs were leaking, um, my, I have hip pain, everything like that that's still happening, but I have not peed when I sneeze in a really long time, and I think that's just because I've gotten used to what I need to do to prevent that from happening. So that hasn't happened in a long time. And my boobs are still leaking, but not as much as they were. It's like, it's more controllable, but I think when it started happening, I was just really worried that it was going to soak through my bras and everything like that. So I started wearing the disposable pads, but now I have one of these, um, one of these little nursing bras and it, you know, it unclips like this. And it actually has removable pads in it that are used to kind of absorb all of that. So I'm not using the disposable pads anymore. I just put these bras in the wash every day. Something that started happening around the end of week 28 or the beginning of week 29 is I started getting headaches. And it wasn't just like a small headache that lasted a little bit. It was like a medium strength headache that lasted till now. I still have it. It's not going away. Tylenol doesn't help. Any of the pain methods that I use for my migraines don't help. I can't take my migraine pills, so obviously they're not helping but nothing I do can seem to get rid of these headaches. On the other side of that, I'm not sleeping very well. I usually don't sleep well at all. I usually, my average is two hours a night. I have three sleeping disorders. I have restless leg syndrome, mild sleep apnea, and insomnia. So all three of those really kind of prevent me from sleeping in the first place. But on the other side of that, I am getting up to pee six to seven times during the night. So not only am I not sleeping my normal usual two hours that really probably doesn't even do my body very much good, now instead of getting the recommended eight hours that your doctor says that you should have, I'm only getting two and now I'm getting up to pee six or seven times during the night. So my average if I wear my Fitbit told me that I slept for about 30 minutes last night. Like there's really, there's not a whole lot. That I can do about it just because I can't sleep any, I can't, I cannot sleep and I can't take any medication for it and it's just really a big mess. So I think my headaches are mostly due to not sleeping well and also allergies. I don't have any constipation, I don't have any hemorrhoids, I seem to be getting out of most of the like really terrible symptoms like that. I don't know, I mean I guess other people would think that like peeing when you sneeze and having headaches are terrible but I would rather not be constipated and not have hemorrhoids and I don't have them so that is definitely good. My hips still hurt. My sciatic nerve pain I think has gotten better but I've kind of gotten used to positions that I can sit in to relieve the pain a little bit. I don't know, I mean they could just be getting better in general but it's not bothering me as much as it was and honestly it wasn't bothering me that much in the first place. Really any pain I've had during pregnancy I've kind of just blown it off like, you know, it's not that bad. If I complain about it now, how am I going to get through labor? Especially because I really can't have many of the pain relief medications that they can give me, like the epidural or anything like that. So if I already know that I'm going to be in so much pain then, what is the point about complaining about a mild pain now? Like, complaining now is not going to get me anywhere. I need to just man up and deal with anything that's coming my way right now. Otherwise, I'll never get through what's going to happen in a couple months. The app did mention about having an itchy belly 
and sometimes it does itch but I think it's mostly just for my allergies I'm just itchy all over it's not really itchy from stretching and I don't have any stretch marks yet hopefully that stays that way but I guess we'll see I don't have any stretch marks yet during week 29 I had one 4D ultrasound done and this was an elective one it cost $150 and I went to baby preview company in Reading Pennsylvania and they were very great um, it does not use insurance it's not for any medical purposes it's just to straight up see the baby so if you did not see I have the full-length video it's about 18 minutes long you can watch the entire session and I also have the daily vlog if you are following our daily vlogs you can watch either one of those and I'll put a little picture here of the baby and that is what it looks like we still don't know the gender we're not finding out the gender but we did have a lot of fun in the ultrasound it was something that my mom really wanted to do like um, as soon as you know I think even before I was pregnant she had mentioned that when the first grandchild comes she absolutely wants to do one of those 3d 4d ultrasounds so we went ahead and did that and we saw the baby and we were trying to see who it looks like more but we can't really decide a lot of people say that it looks like a boy based off of the picture, but also a lot are saying it looks like a girl. I personally think all 3D, 4D ultrasound pictures look like boys. I see a boy in every single one of them, even if I know the baby is a girl, I still think it looks like a boy. I don't know, that's just me, but um, personally I don't really know how to explain this in the best way, but mentally when I think about the baby, I feel like it's a boy. And physically, when I feel it kicking or when it has the hiccups or anything, I feel like it's a girl. So I don't know what's going on in my head. But I guess, you know, the way that my family works, statistically, I should be having a boy. Because there is just spurts of all girls, all boys, all girls, all boys. And currently, I should be having a boy. So to me, mentally, I feel like I'm having a boy. I think that's about it for week 28 and 29. During week 30, I do have an ultrasound and a doctor's appointment. The ultrasound is for the choroid plexus cysts that the baby has that could possibly have our baby um, diagnosed with Down syndrome or Edwards syndrome like trisomy 18. Um, they're expected to go away, but we do need to have the ultrasound for that just in case. And then after that appointment, I also have a follow-up doctor's appointment I was having contractions in the last video I talked about that so I needed to have my cervix and everything checked for dilation um, and measure my uterus everything like that just to make sure that everything's still going okay and hopefully everything's going okay but I guess we'll see other than that I think that's all for this video definitely like the video share the video subscribe to our channel check out our daily vlogs find us on Facebook and leave any comments down below if you have any comments or questions about my pregnancy I'll see you next time. Bye.